In this series of videos, I'll be explaining what time signatures are and how they work. In this video, part two, I'll be explaining the difference between simple and compound time signatures, and I'll be exploring duple, triple, and quadruple time signatures. If you're not sure what time signatures are, have a look at part one of this series of videos first. Okay, let's look at the difference between simple and compound time signatures first. All time signatures can be referred to as either simple or compound. Simple meaning that the pulse can be divided equally into two inner beats, I'll explain this in a moment, whereas compound time is when the pulse is divided equally into three inner beats. So what do I mean by inner beats? Well, here's 4-4. Four, four. We already know that this means that the beats are crotchets and that there are four of them in each bar. To determine whether 4-4 four, four is a simple or compound time signature, we split the pulse, in this case a crotchet, into equal parts. Each crotchet can be split into two quavers. As the pulse can be divided equally into two, then the time signature can be referred to as simple. In other words, 4-4 four, four is a simple time signature. Here's 3-2. We know that this means the beats are minims and that there are three of them in each bar. We split the pulse, a minim, into equal parts. It can be split into two crotchets. This time signature, along with 4-4, four, four, can also be referred to as simple. Now, you may have noticed that I've started to use the word pulse in place of beats. There's a reason for this. Identifying simple and compound time signatures is actually dependent on the pulse as opposed to the beat. Let's look at 6-8. Now, you'll know that this time signature means six quaver beats in the bar. However, have a look at this tune. It's the opening bars to the nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty. Pause this video and have a go at singing or humming this tune, but tapping your feet to the pulse at the same time. Now, if you did have a go at that, you probably tapped your feet on each of these notes that I've highlighted. This is what we call the pulse, the feel of the music. And you can see that there are two pulses per bar. Even though the beat is six quavers, it would feel very odd if we tried to tap our feet to all six quavers in the bar. If you don't believe me, try singing or humming the tune again and tapping your feet to every quaver beat. So although there are six quaver beats in each bar, we've calculated that there are actually two pulses in each bar in 6-8. It's this pulse which we use to help us determine whether the time signature is simple or compound. The pulse is on the first beat of the bar and on this note, which is quaver beat 4. This means that the pulse occurs every three quavers. If we add three quavers, they equal a dotted crotchet and we can use this as our pulse. We use the pulse to determine whether the time signature of 6-8 is simple or compound. We split the pulse into equal parts. It can't be two quavers, as these equal a crotchet, whereas three quavers equal a dotted crotchet. As the pulse can be split into a group of three, the time signature, 6-8, is compound. Let's look at another time signature, 3-4. We note that there are three crotchet beats per bar. Happy birthday is in 3-4. Sing it if you need to and tap your feet to the pulse. And if you know what an anacrusis is, there's one at the beginning. The tune actually starts on beat 3. You'll soon see and feel that there are three pulses per bar. Therefore, we can safely say that the pulse is the same as the beat, three crotchets. We take one of these crotchets and split it into equal parts. That gives us two quavers. As each pulse can be split into two, this means that 3-4 is a simple time signature. I will look at more time signatures and whether they are simple or compound in part 3 of this series of videos. I'll also look at 3-8, which is a bit of an anomaly, in a moment. So we now know that time signatures can be referred to as simple or compound, but they can also be referred to as duple, triple or quadruple. For example, we've already worked out that 4-4 is a simple time signature. We can actually call it a simple quadruple time signature. The quadruple merely referring to the number of pulses as quad means four. We'll look at some other examples in a minute, but just remember that duple means two, 
So time signatures with two pulses, triple meaning three. And as I mentioned a moment ago, quadruple means four. So three, four, which we calculated to be a simple time signature a moment ago, could be referred to as simple triple as it has three beats per bar. Let's look at two, four. It is a simple time signature as each crotchet beat can be split into two quavers. And as it has two beats in a bar, it is therefore duple or to give it its correct name, a simple duple time signature. Six, eight. Well, we calculated it a moment ago to be a compound time signature. We also worked out that it had two pulses. So it is duple. Six, eight is a compound duple time signature. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that three, eight is somewhat of an anomaly, or at least not as straightforward as other time signatures. Firstly, is it simple or compound? Well, you might understandably argue that if you listen to a piece of music in 3-8, it feels like there is one pulse or a single dotted crotchet in each bar. If you split this into equal inner beats, you'd get three quavers, making it compound. However, the problem is when you try to call it duple, triple or quadruple. If 3-8 does have one pulse in the bar, we can't use any of these words to describe it. There is no such word for one pulse in a bar. Therefore, we have to revert back to the three quaver beats per bar rather than just a pulse of one. As there are three beats, we can refer to it as triple. We also need to split each beat into equal parts. Each quaver can be split into two semi-quavers. As the beat can be split into two, it is therefore a simple time signature or, when you give it its full name, a simple triple time signature. I appreciate that 380 is a bit of a tricky one and it's sometimes just best to learn and remember that it is triple simple rather than trying to calculate it in the middle of a music theory exam. So before we finish, just a quick recap. Simple time signatures where the pulse can be split into two equal inner beats. Compound time signatures where the pulse can be split into three equal inner beats. Duple two beats or pulses per bar, triple three beats or pulses per bar, and quadruple four beats or pulses per bar. In this video, I've covered most of the common time signatures you're likely to come across, and they're all listed on the screen. The time signatures in red are other common time signatures, which I didn't quite have time to discuss in detail in this video. Just remember that for any time signature, always refer to it as either simple or compound, and whether it's duple, triple, or quadruple. Thanks for watching this video. Please do keep watching for part three where I'll be looking at some other less common time signatures.